We've got the big news you've been waiting for. Details on how that park reservation system is going to work in Disney World. Plus, dining reservations begin to open and annual passes are getting extended and some big festival news. We've got all the latest Disney news coming up. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Vlog. Oh my goodness, I'm so tired. We got so much stuff to tell you about. Disney World finally released the information about park reservations, so make sure your tickets are linked up. We've also got the details on this year's Food and Wine Festival and which events are unfortunately canceled. With hotels opening this coming Monday, we also have a bunch of new info and guidelines on what a stay at Disney World looks like now new potential screening systems for entering the parks, and who can make dining reservations right this minute. Let's get started. All right, let's dive into that park reservation system. Disney has released details about the reservation system that will be in place to enter the parks once they reopen. That's right, you need a park ticket and a park reservation in order to enter any of the Disney World theme parks beginning July 11th when Magic Kingdom and Animal Kingdom reopen, and July 15th for Epcot and Hollywood Studios. You'll need to have your ticket or annual pass linked to your My Disney Experience account in order to make a theme park reservation. That's super, super important. Reservations will only be available to be made for one park each day. Park hopping will not be happening right away when the parks reopen. Disney's going to release info about modifications or refunds for those guests who have already purchased a park hopper ticket at a later date. So stay tuned and they'll figure out how to refund that. Now, if you have a multi-day ticket, you'll need to make reservations for each day of your trip and know that park reservations will be limited due to capacity restrictions. So when can you start making reservations? All right, here we go with dates. For guests with existing hotel reservations and valid park tickets, June 22nd, Monday. For existing annual pass holders without a hotel stay, June 26th. All other existing ticket holders can book June 28th. So whenever you have a hotel stay, you can make your reservations on those specific dates up through September 21st, 2021. Remember, Disney has currently paused the sale of new tickets at this time. So if you don't have a ticket right now, you won't be able to make theme park reservations. So if you've got a trip scheduled, it's for specific dates and you don't actually want to visit the parks on those dates, you need to move your trip to whatever the dates are that you want to visit the parks. If you have a room-only reservation and need to purchase tickets, you can do so beginning June 24th. Now, starting June 28th, hotel and ticket sales will reopen for arrivals starting in 2021. Ticket sales and hotel reservations for 2020 will resume later this summer based on availability, so that's super important. June 28th, you can start buying hotel and tickets for 2021, but if you wanna buy hotel and tickets for any time in the rest of 2020, those reservations have not been reopened yet and will resume later this summer. If you're booking a new trip, you will be able to see theme park availability before you book so you won't be stuck with a hotel package and then find out there's no park reservations left. So don't worry about that. You can make sure to look at that park reservation availability before you book any future hotels. All right, there's a ton of info to unpack. Don't worry, we've got you covered. We'll be following the latest announcements, so be sure to follow us on social media and sign up for our newsletter. All of this information is on the blog, you guys. Everything, every single date, every single bit of information, it's all over there on Disney Food Blog, so definitely go check it out if you want more specifics. And of course, we're gonna have videos coming up with all the how-tos and what you need to know about the new reservation system as well, how to plan your upcoming Disney trips, et cetera. We've got you guys covered. All right, let's talk pass holder previews. Annual pass holders will be getting a special preview event before the parks open to the public. On July 9th and 10th, there will be an AP preview at Magic Kingdom and Animal Kingdom. Golden Oak residents and Club 33 members will also have a preview on July 9th. And cast member previews will be held July 7th and 8th. Pass holders must register to attend the event and spaces will be limited. You'll also only be able to visit one park on either day. Emails and more information about registration will be sent out soon. Now you can add a guest to your reservation, but they also have to have an annual pass and they have to be linked to you. Additionally, annual pass holders will receive a one month extension on their annual pass beyond the already extended expiration date for the number of days the parks were closed. This will appear in your My Disney Experience account in October you can receive a partial refund instead. Disney will be releasing more information about how to make that choice in early July. 
For those on a monthly payment plan, payments will resume July 11th, but you can cancel in lieu of receiving that extra month. If you choose to cancel your annual pass, payments made between July 11th and August 11th will be refunded and future payments would be canceled. Okay, let's talk magic bands. Complimentary magic bands will be discontinued in 2021. Disney announced that beginning January 1st, 2021, they will be rolling out an all new update to the My Disney Experience app, which will integrate more features that can be used directly from your smartphone, including of course that digital key feature, which is already there with which you can unlock your hotel room with your phone. Because of those updates, complimentary magic bands for hotel guests will be phased out starting January 1st, 2021. Guests are still going to be able to purchase new magic bands and use existing magic bands, but resort guests will not get one for free, although they will continue to receive a discount on upgraded magic bands. All right, let's talk festivals. Epcot festivals are returning. We've been waiting to hear whether or not Epcot's Food and Wine Festival would be happening this year. Now we've got an answer. A Taste of Epcot International Food and Wine Festival will start the very first day that Epcot reopens, July 15th, and will be a sort of hybrid festival of the Flower and Garden Festival and the Food and Wine Festival, because of course Flower and Garden got cut really, really short in March. And so they're kind of overlapping the two. So it's going to be sort of half flower and garden and half food and wine. And I think it's mostly because they just want to still be able to sell the merchandise from their flower and garden festival. <laughs> so I think that's what's happening. Anyway, it's going to start July 15th. There is no end date listed right now for this festival, this hybrid food and wine slash flower and garden festival. There's no end date. They basically said it would go into the fall. So we're thinking it'll continue as long as it normally does into November, but we don't have a confirmed end date for it yet, sadly. We'll keep you updated when we have one. Now, Disney also said there would be 20 food booths at this one, which is a lower number than what you usually find at the Epcot Food and Wine Festival. Usually there's 35 plus at the Epcot Food and Wine Festival. There's definitely fewer at Flower and Garden, so they're definitely taking the number down from food and wine, but 20 food booths, nothing to sneeze at. We love that. And then of course there'll be topiaries joining the mix because they're all still there from flower and garden. So they're going to continue to be there in this sort of weird hybrid festival. Now with this good news comes a little bit of bad news. The eat to the beat concerts will not be happening this year. Disney says in the interest of physical distancing and the safety of guests, performers, and cast members, they will not be hosting the Eat to the Beat concert, but you'll still be able to catch all the Epcot entertainment like Mariachi Cobre and Jammeters throughout the park. Not the same as Boys to Men, but you know. All right, got some more bad news, some more event cancellations for you. Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party has been canceled for this year. The party was set to take place on select nights from August 13th to November 1st, 2020, but with no parades and fireworks in the near future, Disney has made the decision to cancel. And Typhoon Lagoon's H2O Glow Nights are canceled as well. Disney has shared that guests who have already purchased tickets to these events will be assisted with refunds over the coming weeks. Disney did also address Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party and Epcot's Festival of the Holidays, though it was just to say that they're keeping an eye on things and will update us when they come to a decision about those future events. So those have not yet been canceled. According to a recent post on Unite Here Local 737's Facebook page, we now know Disney has started calling even more cast members to return to work at Disney World's theme parks and resorts. According to the post, some workers will be called to return on June 28th and others will be called for July 5th. We have the full list of locations expected to recall workers over on DisneyFoodBlog.com, but it's worth noting that a few locations are a bit outdated. Liberty Inn is still on that list, even though it's been closed and replaced by Regal Eagle. We will keep you posted as we get more information about where cast members are returning to work and when we may see those locations open. All right, dining reservations have opened for some hotel guests. Upcoming Disney World trips are going to rely heavily on reservations and your smartphone and all that stuff. And for some people, these have started to reopen. Disney World dining reservations opened up on Thursday for guests who have hotel reservations between June 22nd and July 10th, 2020. Only a few restaurants will be open, all located at the Disney Vacation Club resorts, and those are opening on June 22nd as well. At this time, guests can only book reservations during the length of their stay and can't book anything past July 10th. But a valid resort hotel reservation is required to make reservations and you'll need to call the reservation center to make them. Can't do it on your phone, can't do it online. You can book dining reservations at hotels you are not staying at, however. So if you've got a 
reservation at Bay Lake Tower. You can book reservations at Grand Floridian or at Riviera. You don't have to be staying at the hotel where you are eating, but you do have to be staying at a hotel. Now, cancellations work the same as always. If you cancel less than 24 hours in advance, there's a fee of $10 per person. And you'll be able to cancel your dining reservations via the My Disney Experience app and website, but you will have to call to modify any dining reservations. Theme park dining reservations will open at a later date, and we're still awaiting that date and any other reservation details for the theme parks. But what we do know is that you will have to have a dining reservation to eat at a sit-down table service restaurant in a park. All right, we've got other big dining news. Disney has announced a new mobile dine check-in feature for the My Disney Experience app. So mobile dine check-in is a new feature that will allow guests to skip the host at Disney World table service restaurants. So you don't have to go to the podium anymore. You just check in. You say, I'm here on your phone when you get to your table service restaurant and it'll automatically check you in. And in Disney's words, this is quote unquote, maximizing your vacation time with family and friends and minimizing your contact with others. <laughs> when it's time to check in, you'll get a push notification from the app to let you know or scan a QR code outside the restaurant. You'll check in through the app and get a text when your table is ready. Disney also released a few maps of all the restaurants that will have mobile check-in options. Restaurants in all of the parks except Animal Kingdom are listed at this time, and the list actually includes several character meals and buffets, which we weren't sure if we would see reopening right away. Currently, the only character meal confirmed to be returning will be Topolino's Terrace, although it will be a limited and modified character experience. So we're checking it out first thing on Monday. So follow us on social media to stay up to date on the latest details. All right, menu updates. We've seen lots of starters, appetizers, soups, salads, entrees, desserts, and kids menu selections disappear from menus all across Disney World hotels right now. This was pretty expected as we've already seen many restaurants in Disney Springs move to much more limited menus. The Wave won't be running their breakfast buffet. Several Benedicts have disappeared from the menus at Grand Floridian Cafe and Olivia's Cafe. A few sushi selections have left the menu at Kona. And there are several big changes at Topolino's Terrace. The shared pastries at breakfast have been removed and both the breakfast and dinner menus have seen their entree selections reduced from nine choices to just six. We're not sure how long these reduced menus will stick around, but we will of course keep you updated. All right, Jumbo House is not reopening yet. Recently, we noticed that Disney Vacation Club members could book at Disney's Animal Kingdom Villa's Jumbo House, despite it not being listed as one of the resorts opening on June 22nd. But now we've learned that Jumbo House will not be opening in the initial stage. Those with existing reservations will have their bookings transferred to Animal Kingdom Villa's Kidani Village. Jumbo House will reopen as capacity restrictions lift. And transportation is starting up. We've seen transportation start up around Disney World this past week in preparation for the arrival of hotel guests. Buses were practicing runs around the resort and we haven't seen those since March. The Skyliner was also up in testing. Disney hasn't indicated whether or not Disney Skyliner will resume when some of the hotels begin to open on June 22nd or when the theme parks open July 11th and July 15th, but it's still nice to see them getting ready. We do know that in addition to buses, Magical Express, the monorail, and ferry boats will be operational starting this coming Monday, though service will be reduced. Minivans, Disney's official Lyft partnership, will not be running right away, though the regular Lyft service will be. So if you want to get a Lyft or an Uber, you can get one of those, but you can't get a minivan when the parks first open. All right, health acknowledgement and safety tips. Ahead of the hotel and park openings, Disney has released more safety tips and details. A health acknowledgement has been added to Disney's website asking that guests who show symptoms of COVID-19 or have been in contact with someone who has exhibited symptoms not enter Disney World property before a 14-day quarantine. Disney's making it abundantly clear that by visiting Walt Disney World Resort, not only do you acknowledge that you are free from any symptoms related to the virus, but that you also voluntarily assume all risks related to exposure, quote unquote. The Incredibles are also helping to share some safety messages in a new campaign to encourage guests to check their temperature, wash their hands often, and wear masks. All right, there's a new screening system being tested. While we were at Disney Springs this past week, we spotted an entirely new security check system. This system was testing in the Lime Garage entrance to Disney Springs, and since it was so new, a manager actually asked us not to take any photos. The system involved a touchless scanner that checks your bag similar to a metal detector. These scanners would allow guests to get where they're going faster by skipping the bag check lines and reducing overall content. 
It's in a testing phase, so we don't know how and if they'll use this new system. Animal Kingdom is nearly finished with their new bag check area construction, so we'll have to wait to see until July 11th if those new scanners will make an appearance. All right, Hong Kong Disneyland has reopened. Hong Kong Disneyland became the second Disney park around the world to reopen this week. The park reopened on Thursday. Hong Kong is following many of the same guidelines as Shanghai Disneyland, including enhanced cleaning and safety measures and their ticket reservation system. And Hilton Head and Vero Beach are reopening. Disney Vacation Club Beach Resorts have reopened this week as well. Just like hotels in Disney World, Hilton Head and Vero Beach have extra precautions in place and some amenities are limited or unavailable. Pools and beaches are open with social distancing though restaurants have limited offerings. All right, let's talk the NBA at Disney World. NBA players are going to get plenty of perks. We've learned where NBA players will be staying for the upcoming playoffs happening at Disney World's ESPN Wide World of Sports. Players are going to be at the Grand Floridian Resort, the Yacht Club, and Grand Destino Tower at Coronado Springs. They'll also get players-only lounges, 24-hour concierge, daily meals, and special room service options, barbers, manicurists, pedicurists, and special movie screenings. And while they can't go to the parks, each team will be able to reserve a block of up to 17 rooms for their guests. The NBA will resume its season on July 31st with a 22-team format. All right, we've got some airline package information. For those of you looking to book a fully inclusive package deal for 2021, airline packages for Disney World, Disneyland, and Aulani, including consumer direct and third-party bookings, will not be offered for arrivals beginning in 2021. Disney will honor existing airline reservations and allow guests to make new airline bookings through the rest of 2020. The Star Wars celebration that was going to be held at the Anaheim Convention Center has been postponed. The event has been rescheduled for August 18th through 21st, 2022. Tickets can be transferred for the new date or you can receive a full refund, though if you transfer the ticket, you'll get a special edition pin. Disneyland After Dark Star Wars Night, which was scheduled for August 27th, is also getting rescheduled, though we don't have the date yet. Adventures by Disney departures are currently suspended through Monday, August 31st. Impacted guests or their travel agents can be contacted with updated information and options. Guests may receive the option of a full refund or transfer of the cost of their trip. All right, this is some really, really big cookie news. Gideon's Bakehouse is coming to Disney Springs with a brand new storefront. Now, Gideon's Bakehouse is a legendary, very, very popular bakery in Orlando. They've sold their famous, gigantic, amazing chocolate chip cookies at Polite Pig for years now, but pretty soon you're going to be able to go straight to a Gideon's storefront to get the cookies whenever you want them. The location is set to open at the landing across from Jock Lindsay's Hangar Bar in Disney Springs later this year. The new spot will feature an expanded menu of Gideon's cookies and cake slices along with their own unique line of coffees. They're also introducing new limited edition flavors available exclusively during timed daily releases and a hot cookie happy hour every evening. In the meantime, Polite Pig has replaced the Gideon's cookie with a bourbon chocolate chip cookie. Definitely thinner but very delicious. Then they swapped it out with a bourbon on the rocks cookie with chocolate rocks. Still tasty but definitely gooier than the Gideon's cookie. Next up, Chef Art Smith's restaurant Homecoming has reopened in Disney Springs. The menu has been shortened a bit, but you can still get that famous fried chicken and moonshine. And the new Shine Bar outdoor patio is open. Guests can sit out there. They will be seated by seaters to go sit out there. And they are anticipating a new standalone bar out there coming soon as well. Art Smith was there at the reopening celebration to welcome guests back. He is, of course, the celebrity chef that is the genius behind Homecoming. We got the chance to interview him, and you can read the full interview over at DisneyFoodBlog.com. A few more locations have reopened at Disney Springs and extended their hours this week as well, including the food trucks on the west side. We'd seen the cookie dough and everything sweet truck and a few others open. Now they are starting to open for lunch as well. So mac and cheese, hot diggity dogs, Four Rivers Cantina, those are all in the mix. You can also once again get bubble waffles at Aristo Crepes and stop by the Coca-Cola store or their rooftop bar to try the chocolate brownie masher drink. This beverage is made up of Fairlife chocolate milk, Stoli vodka, and Kahlua rum. There's some ice cream in there too, and it's topped off with a Coca-Cola brownie. We describe this one as a boozy brown cow, so you can get it for $15. 
Coach has also reopened with a surprise re-release of those Coach Mini Ears that sold out super fast last year. And in addition to those openings, it seems some stores are experiencing irregular hours. Goofy's Candy Company, The Art of Disney, and Once Upon a Toy, and a few more will experience temporary closures. Most of these stores had just officially reopened last week, reminding us that things can change at any time. And several locations in Disney Springs are doing a temporary opening closing kind of thing. For instance, Wolfgang Puck Bar and Grill is closed on Mondays and Tuesdays, but open the rest of the week. All right, let's talk merchandise. The mini main attraction is going on hiatus. This super popular limited edition mini main attraction merch series. Remember that monthly series, each one of them is sort of themed after a particular ride, is going on hiatus. Disney shared that the new collection product launches and limited edition merchandise will not be available for in-person purchases at Walt Disney World Resort until further notice. But we did assume this collection would still be available on Shop Disney. However, Shop Disney has removed release months for the remaining collections, and the site currently reads, Minnie will return soon. Minnie has headed on summer vacation. Stay tuned and check back right here for the upcoming releases of Series 6 through 12. You won't miss a thing as you build your magical collection. So that's what Shop Disney is telling us. Now, we did get a peek at the upcoming Carousel collection, though no release date has been set. There's some new Alice in Wonderland merchandise. We spotted an adorable Alice phone case at the Disney Style Store. The design includes the iconic teacups and the case also has a pocket that can fit up to two cards with an adjustable strap for $44.99. We also saw a very cute Alice tumbler for $19.99. And there's lots of new mugs. If you're looking to add to your mug collection, we found two contenders at Disney Springs this week. The Toy Story mug we spotted features our favorite characters from the movie and the handle is made up of building blocks with Woody, Buzz, and Disney Park icons on them. This one's $19.99. I think it has sold out over there at World of Disney. It had sold out by the next day, but they may be getting it back in. We also found an awesome color-changing mug. It's designed after the poison apple from Snow White and changes from black to green when you add a hot beverage. Also, $19.99. There's a bunch of new lounge fly bags. We've got two new collections. There's a new purple and pink Daisy Duck fabric backpack coming soon for $75. This line also features a wallet with the same design for $40. And for Star Wars fans, there's a super fuzzy new Chewbacca backpack complete with faux fur, also for $75 and a matching wallet for $40. These are both currently sold out, so keep your eyes peeled if you want one. There's a brand new limited edition Ratatouille crossbody bag from Danielle Nicole. Cole. The cobalt blue cylindrical bag is available for pre-order now for $68 and it's going to ship on June 29th. We've got some brand new mini ears. The 4th of July ears feature lots of sequins, red, white, blue with the stars and stripes adorning the bow. You're going to find it for $29.99 at Shop Disney. And finally, loads of new baby collections. If you got a little one, get ready to shop because Disney also released loads of new baby stuff from sweet Mickey and Minnie dresses and plush blankets to the cutest baby Yoda onesie. There's a bunch of new character onesies and booties as well. Mike Wazowski, Donald, Simba, Spider-Man, even the green aliens from Toy story. We also spotted a brand new kitchen collection this week at World of Disney. You'll find oven mitts featuring the evil stepsisters from Cinderella, Bullseye from Toy Story, Chip from Beauty and the Beast, and more. And the most adorable aprons inspired by the outfits worn by Belle and the Beast, Woody and Jesse, and even Prince Charming. So there is the latest news for you this week, and we are expecting a lot more to come. Stay tuned. Don't forget to follow us here on YouTube, follow us over on Instagram, follow us on Twitter, and sign up for that newsletter, you guys. We release all this information immediately when we get it on that newsletter. So you can check our description and sign up for that. As always, thank you for listening. Thanks for watching. This is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.